Welcome to Insurmountable. This is a turn-based mountain climbing adventure, I guess you could call it, made by Bite Rockers Games. I watched a friend play it for a bit, and I kind of fell in love with it pretty quickly, actually. The uh, strategy part of it is, well, it seems decent from what I've seen so far, but the part that I really love the most is the sci-fi time loop kind of story context that happens around this whole uh, like roguelike kind of adventure-ish structure. A little bit hard to explain, but you'll see when we get into it. So let's start a new game. I've already played the first level, so I'm going to replace that game. Mm, the lowest difficulty is normal. I'm going to try difficult. Increase difficulty. Your resources deplete faster in the mountain's environment and weather is deadlier. Recommended for experienced mountaineers. I don't know if like two hours of experience is enough, but we'll see. Hopefully I won't regret it. You cast your gaze over the enormous mountain landscape. You've traveled across the globe seeking out adventure, but this island is like nothing you've ever seen before. As far as you can tell, it's largely unexplored. The only information you could find were a few rumors about an unknown occupying force. On the way here, you stumbled across abandoned property and lost places. You wonder what happened here, what secrets the island is keeping. Then you shake your head. It might be nice to have some answers, but your goal is clear. Reach the summit. That is why you're here. That is what drives you. So yeah, I think we'll see more of the time loopy kind of sci-fi stuff as we reach the goal. For now, we're just trying to climb all the way up there. So there's a whole bunch of things on screen. I'll try to explain it in bits and pieces as we go so I don't just info dump. But I should mention that there's essentially everything comes down to five different resources that you need to manage. You have energy, oxygen, health, sanity, and body temperature. We'll talk more about those as we go. But for now, let's start moving towards our goal. You see these like coins floating above these different hexagons. Those are events. So this is like a treasure chest, so it means a chance of finding something. These are like two people talking, so someone to talk to. Generally, events are good things, so you pretty much want to hit as many as you can. So yeah, let's go for this one. Yeah, if you just click on it, it just makes like an auto route, so you could go that route or you could try to perhaps make a smarter route yourself. Like, I don't know if I'll like that route, so for now... Let's go get this event and then see what route I want to take to that treasure chest, or if I want to even go to the treasure chest at all. Unexpected meeting. A gust of wind catches you and you almost fall into a deep fissure. You flail wildly with your arms, trying to keep your balance. Suddenly, someone grabs your wrist and pulls you back from the edge. That was close. Just a second later and you would have fallen to your death. Your knees still weak, you take a look at your rescuer. She's a young woman in a threadbare anorak. There's a green stone fastened around her neck with a leather strap. Fascinated, you stare at the hand-carved charm. Its soft glow is almost hypnotizing. She smiles and hands you some much-needed provisions. Take the gift. A strange feeling overcomes you. You're sure you've been in this situation before. Deja vu? Distracted, you place her gift into your pocket. When you look back up, the strange woman is gone. Truly bizarre, but you're grateful. Okay, what did they give us? Protective helmet. A bit, um, less health loss in events. All right, let's equip that. So yeah, just to take a look at our equipment. The helmet's the only thing we have equipped per se, but we have some other things in our backpack. Canned energy gives us <laughs> canned energy <laughs> canned food gives us energy 
I guess that's canned energy, in a way. Hot tea increases our body temperature if we use it. This climbing rope makes it take less energy to basically move for three hours. There's three little green things here, meaning we can use it three different times. And we have a tent. Tent is super, super important. Um, I guess I'll explain more about that as we go. But yeah, you're gonna need to sleep to get back energy and stuff. Okay. Whoop. So that's where we're going. It's always helpful to plan things out in advance and get some sort of an idea where you're going. Especially because there's quite a few dead ends. And you don't want to have to retrace your steps too much. But yeah, for now this looks fine. Let's head over this way and get this other event. So moving takes energy, but thankfully moving on flat or very, um, moving like up or down small distances or on completely flat terrain takes very little energy, but it takes exponentially more energy the bigger uh, height difference there is between two tiles. So ideally you go up as gradually as possible and don't just suddenly go up really, really high or down really, really low, really fast. Gradual is better. The branches of a nearby bush are completely covered in spider webs. As you take a closer look, you notice several spiders vanishing into a hole in the ground. You bend over to inspect the hole. It looks like there's something hidden in there. Yeah, as my friend said, we're just gonna like silent hill it and stick our hand in there just like an absolute weirdo. Reach into the hole, so that's gonna have a sanity penalty. Which is understandable because it's scary as hell to do that. <laughs> Spiders skitter over your hands, but they don't hurt you. Your fingertips brush something soft, a cloth bag. You pull it out and discover equipment inside. So we get some experience, there's a level up system, and an oxygen mask. Yeah, we get more oxygen when moving, and more oxygen when we're resting or in events so generally just more oxygen does that go okay so that takes the place of the helmet so the question is which one do i want well right now we're well below the death zone of 6,000 meters once we reach 6,000 meters that's when we start using up oxygen so at the moment oxygen is completely irrelevant so there's no reason to use an oxygen mask right now might as well put on the protective helmet mm, let's get this treasure chest easy enough. Close enough. Bear trap. You stand under the skeleton of an old tree. Its exposed roots form a hollow that seem to lead deep into the earth. Someone has set traps in front of it. Maybe they hid something in the hole? Let's disarm the traps. Can take a little bit of sanity, but that's fine. We're good on sanity right now. Use a thick branch to trigger the mechanism on all the traps, making it safe for you to reach into the hollow in the tree's roots. You pull out a crate and find equipment inside. Oh, we just leveled up, and we get fur gloves. Better temperature. Think that goes in this slot? Yes. Nice. And we can level up. So when you level up, you get to choose between three different skills. Some of them last only short amounts of time. Some of them might last the entire mission. So you can see in the bottom right of that little info card that pops up, that's the first thing I'm looking at is how long it's active for, because something that I'm taking at the beginning of a mission, I think I should probably go for something that's active the whole mission so that it's always going to be useful. And then maybe towards the end of the mission, I'll take some of the shorter ones. But this one's 48 hours. That one's the end of the mission. And that one's also until the end of the mission. This gives me more body temperature when I use a consumable item. And this makes it so whenever I wake up, I get more energy, body temperature, and oxygen. Well, we're going to be sleeping quite a bit, so that's definitely a good thing. So let's go with that. I want to make sure I don't get myself into a dead end. So if you look here... Mm, wait, there is a pathway through there? Okay, I, th I thought that was a dead end, but it looks like there is a pathway through here if I wanted to go that way. I don't know if I do want to go that way, though. I think it might be better to go over here. 
Actually, you know what? Nah, let's make it interesting. Let's go over here. So our ultimate goal is like right about there. It looks like there's a pass through there. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's no direct way over there. We have to go kind of around. And you can see that's going to take a big chunk of energy. Mostly that's because of these really high or really... How do I say it? It's not just high. It's not about going down to up. It's also about going up to down. Just uh, there's big height differences between the tiles here. That's probably what's going to take most of the energy. Uh, but I think I kind of want to do that anyway, to be honest. So how about we use the climbing rope? That's going to make our energy usage 40% less for three hours. So you can see this right now is showing the red bits showing what it's going to take to get there as soon as I use this. Wow, that didn't seem like 40% less. <laughs> Why did that make more of a difference? <laughs> Maybe it's going to run out part of the way there? It actually might. Shit. Well, let's go here and see how long is left of it. So it's three hours. It takes 0.3 with each, each tile. I guess it is going to run out, huh? So I actually shouldn't have used it just yet. I should have saved it until we got to this really steep part and then used it. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, there's only one use left. And it's gone. So let's use it again. Definitely not the most efficient. Ooh. Ooh, I really like these here. Oh heck, I'm gonna go for it. It's worth it. These ones that are kind of glowing, I think it basically just means that that event is especially good and there's a guaranteed good outcome. Like, it's going to give you something good. I don't think there's any way to lose anything at these shining ones. Steps have been hewn into the stone, leading you to a pedestal of sorts. Some type of religious site or shrine, maybe? You're not a particularly spiritual person, but somehow this place feels holy. It might just be your imagination, but you pray to the shrine for... Health or energy? Well, we're on full health, so let's go for energy. And we get back all the energy we just used. It's going to take very little energy to go here because it's mostly flat. So let's just go get that treasure chest real quick. There's a rocky ledge nearby. On its edge stands a gnarled tree that has been split by lightning. Something glistens between the blackened remains of the stump. Every once in a while, small stones crumble away from the edge and fall into the deep. Is taking a look worth the risk? Heck yeah, approach the tree. You get closer to the tree, step by step, until you're close enough to touch it. You reach into the hollow stump and find some equipment. It was worth taking a look. And I think that image is bugged out. I don't think it's supposed to be a white rectangle. We get a flashlight and some experience. So the flashlight increases the light radius at night, which is actually kind of perfect because it just turned nighttime. Yeah, you can see how much it increases it if you just look at the lightness around it right now. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think there's any particular disadvantage to walking at night other than it just literally limits your visibility. But other than that, I don't think there's any harm. Maybe it's colder, perhaps? Maybe your temperature goes down faster? That'd be logical, but I'm not actually sure if that's the case. Anyway, why don't we wanted to go over here. gonna take a decent chunk of energy but not quite enough for me to want to use the last use of my climbing rope there's a cave over there but we're pretty high on energy but then again it's kind of always good to sleep in a cave when you can let me show you why let's let's go over to the cave you enter the cave cautiously a short way ahead the ground disappears there's a wide, deep fault in the earth in front of you, stretching from one wall to the other. Let's explore the fault. So that's going to take some energy. 
You squint down and make out something lying at the bottom of the fault. From this distance, it looks like it might be a backpack or bag. Could there be valuable equipment in there? Okay, so we have a flashlight, so we can use that as a special item here. You move further and further into the cave system. The knocking is muffled and regular as if coming from a broken machine. Then suddenly, silence. You wait for a moment, but nothing happens. Strange. You're about to turn around and go back when you discover a metallic chest in a niche. You open it and find some provisions. Guess this detour was worth it. Experience and some oxygen. Nice. Okay, so now we can sleep. So that's the really nice thing about caves, is it gives you a place to sleep without having to use your tent. And the reason you might not want to use your tent is the tent can only be used three times in total. Because in this world, tents disintegrate and just, I, I don't know. <laughs> Look, it's a weird island. It's a weird mountain. The conditions are really harsh. And the tent is made out of cellulose or something. I don't know. But they can only be used three times, so if you find a place to sleep, it's generally a good idea to do it. Especially when you're out of the death zone. Because so if you're in the death zone and you sleep for a long time, you're going to be burning through oxygen, right? But since we're not in the death zone, we don't have to worry about oxygen. Therefore, we're only going to gain things, right? The only thing you're losing is time. So you can see it's nighttime right now, but when we wake up, it's going to be a little bit into daytime. Other than that, we're gaining energy, gaining body temperature not using up the durability of our tent. So you really might as well. And now it's daytime again. Oh yeah, we leveled up. 24 hours, 48, end of mission. Whenever you use a consumable item, gain four body temperature. Let's take that. I would like that. Is that the only way to get there? Uh, see, that's kind of a very big um, height difference there, so it's going to take a lot of energy. So it's probably better if we kind of go around. Wait. Hold on, I, I can't get a very good view of this. Let's go over here and then take another look. Oh yeah, we can get there from the back, huh? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, you can see, like, let me just show you how much of a difference it makes taking gradual ways up compared to just taking one long way up. Like, okay, this is definitely taking significantly more time. You can see this is how much time it's going to take, uh, two and a half hours. But look at the energy consumption. You can barely see it. It's minus four. If we get rid of that completely, and let's just say we head straight there. It's less time, only 45 minutes, but instead of minus four, it's minus 10. So it's all about managing these stats. Right now, again, we're not worrying about oxygen, so time doesn't really matter. So you might as well just take the way that takes less energy, right? So yeah, it just depends on the situation. No, oh, someone is injured. A local man sitting up against a rock face waves you over. As you approach him, he holds out an oxygen bottle, his face contorted with pain. He says something to you, but you don't understand a word. Um, let's find out what's wrong with them. It's going to take a lot of energy and some temperature and some time, but it's going to give me a bunch of uh, sanity. You look at the stranger who keeps grabbing his shoulder. You're sure that he has dislocated it. You gesture to him to hold out his hand to you. You pull it with a jerk. Ugh. He screams. Then there's silence. A few seconds later, the stranger is beaming at you. That seems to have done the trick. He hands you a gift and thanks. 
some more sanity and an oxygen bottle and some crampons. Nice. Okay, so the crampons make it so we take it takes 25% less energy to move on ice. Okay, so we want to preferentially prefer ice if we can. There's no ice around here right now, but there should be as we get higher, I think. Okay, where were we heading to? Like here? Yes. How's that pathway? It's not bad. Let's just go part of the way and then reassess, though. Yeah, it's getting a little bit steep here. Here's some snowy tiles. Ooh. There's a, like, shrine over there. Oh, yeah. Now we're getting to some of the special tiles. So there's two different types of special tiles. There's the blue exclamation mark and the yellow exclamation mark. This blue one just means that... Hmm. Well, I think there's a difference between the stone and the snow and the ice blue tiles. I forget the difference. But basically... Nothing bad in particular is going to happen. No bad events will happen from a blue exclamation mark, but it does just take up more like temperature and energy. So it takes more resources. I don't know why I went on it. I could have just gone around without having to go through the blue one. Oh well. Is there an efficient way up there? Wait, that doesn't have a huge height difference. Like, can we get around back? I think we maybe can, yeah. It might be better just to go straight for it though. Maybe a little bit better to go here. Yeah. An old woman sits in front of a crooked hut. She wears a friendly, toothless smile and motions you to sit with her to recharge your strength. You do as she suggests and regain health, which we don't need, or warmth, which we do. So let's do warmth. Oh, there's some ice over there. And an event. The uh, red there means you're not going to have the energy to complete that. So yeah, there's one of the yellow exclamation mark tiles, so those mean that there's a chance of a bad event happening. Which can give you status ailments, so you might like break your, like sprain your leg or something, for example. Which then makes it take more energy to move for a limited amount of time. Ooh, there's a cave down there. Of course, that wouldn't mean climbing back down. Hmm, I don't see any other cave nearby, so I think I might want to use that cave, actually. Let's hope we can get there before we run out of energy. It's a good idea to save your tent as much as possible. If you you can sleep without a tent, but you just lose temperature a lot faster, for example. So it's not a good idea. It's not exactly the most ideal time to sleep because we're sleeping at the very beginning of the day, but whatever. It's not that hard to see at night, especially now with the light. It's dry and sheltered from the wind. Let's sleep for, you can do either a long, short time or a long time. Let's do a long time. Get most of our energy back. 
It's also almost nighttime again, but meh. Did I mention this game has permadeath, by the way? Or kind of permadeath? I think there's a system where you can, like, go back in with... Uh, there's multiple characters to play. I, I think there are some lifelines, basically, but it is essentially permadeath. Okay, we definitely want that. Okay, yeah, see, so if I climbed that huge thing, it would ruin my energy. <laughs> so it'd be much better to go around. But then there's a yellow one, so there's a chance we break our legs. Oof. Yeah, and because they know there's something good there, they put some other yellow tiles right next to it. So we're going to have a lot of potential bad events here. But uh, let's go for it. an active fire pit, but not a soul around. The flames seem to be fighting the icy wind for survival. Watching the fire dance in the face of the cold is almost meditative. You watch it for a while and regain... Ooh, energy, definitely. We're pretty good on warmth. More than made up for the energy we use getting there, I think. Ooh, this is a safe way off. Let's do that. Don't need to break a leg. Well, you might break a leg there. Um... Yeah, you can see how much these blue tiles take. Like, look at the energy that I'm using up. Six. If I go for one blue tile, it's all the way to 11. So five energy just to set foot on there. Whereas, if I just go to a normal one, it doesn't even take any extra energy. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a big difference. Hmm... Do I really want to use that much energy? I think I'd rather just risk breaking my leg. Oh no! Okay. As you attempt to jump over a pile of debris, you slip and catch your foot in a crack between the rocks. Your ankle is in agony. Okay. Can either quickly yank my foot out of the crack or which takes a lot of energy, or clear away the rubble, which takes temperature and time. Um, I have temperature to spare. Let's do that. You laboriously clear the rubble rock by rock. You don't want to take any risks, just in case your ankle is sprained. It takes a while, but eventually the crack is wide enough for you to gingerly pull your foot free. You check it. Just a graze. Okay. Didn't sprain our foot. Whew. Could have been worse. And we found a corpse. We discovered the remains of a mountaineer. His skin is gray and cold. Mm, we can take a cursory look, which takes a little sanity, or a thorough look, which takes a lot of sanity. My sanity is actually kind of getting pretty low. So let's take a, just a cursory look. Uh, I find nothing useful. Okay, well, we get some XP. Right. Let's head up. Let's try to avoid that square if we can. Hmm. Oh, jeez. There's a lot of bad squares here. Oh, so many blue ones. Okay, this is kind of nasty and taking a lot of energy. So... Let's go here first. And for this, let's use the last bit of our climbing rope. So 
Good look at energy it's going to take right now, and then... Okay, much better. Ooh, a bunch of events just right here. Can I get over there? No. <laughs> so it looks like it's just right there, but you have to go all the way around. Actually, stop. Much more efficient to do that. Again, little height differences are always better. Trade. You carefully open the door of a shack. Inside, there are books and other documents piled to the ceiling. Just as you're about to enter, a tall woman with long white hair suddenly appears in front of you. She speaks to you quickly in a language you don't understand. When you shrug apologetically, she disappears and return sh returns shortly after with a few possessions. So she wants to trade. She would like some crampons from you and offers you one of her items in return. Hmm. I can get oxygen, don't need it, tent. Don't need it, but it's always good to have a second one. Food, don't need it. I really don't want to get rid of the crampons. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't want to trade. Fresh snow is piled high ahead of you on a mountainside. There must have been an avalanche here recently. As you trudge through the heaps of snow, your gaze falls on a vacuum flask of tea. It's half buried in the snow. Oh Jesus, that would take a lot of energy to dig. I don't think I want to do that. I also don't know if I want to just take the tea. I guess? You stow the flask in your pack and quickly move on. It's too dangerous here. I wonder if later we're going to encounter the owner of the tea and they're going to be pissed at us for taking it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Feels unlikely anybody would come back just for a thermos of tea. Well, we have to go this way anyway to get around. There's the goal up there. And it's going to be daylight. Yay! A low building catches your attention. It's well integrated into the landscapes. You almost didn't notice it. The architecture is modern and simple. Did the mysterious occupiers leave it behind? As you approach the entrance, you hear a snarl coming from inside. A snarl? Eh, go inside. You slip through the narrow entrance. On the other side, there's a room whose proportions take you by surprise hidden from the outside and reaching deep into the mountain. You look around. There are monitors mounted on a wall, and next to them you find maps of mountains and technical blueprints for what appears to be antennas. Yeah. Just some XP. Oh wait, there's more. You hear another snarl directly behind you this time. In the corner of your eye, you spot a cougar, ready to pounce. Oh my god. <laughs> you leap to the side, and its sharp claws only barely graze your thigh. You run for the exit. Got very slightly hurt. Forty-eight hours. End of mission. End of mission. Okay. Mm, this one gives me more body temperature when I use a consumable item. This one gives me more body temperature per hour when resting or in events. Hmm. Only active during sleeping outside. Reduce penalty for sleeping without a tent. So yeah, this only applies if you're sleeping without a tent. Which I hope to avoid. So let's take warm thoughts instead. Get more body temperature from using consumables. Got a couple more events here. Treasure chest and then a cave. Cool, we can sleep. Your breath is taken away. Towering in front of you on the slope are bizarrely shaped masses of ice and snow. And several tents not far away. Who set up camp here? You call out, but no one answers. 
Hmm. Let's go to the first tent. How breathtaking and surreal. The sight of the ice towers captivates you. You're distracted just a second when something hits you on the head. <laughs> you press the palm of your hand against the painful area. Blood drips on the lily white snow. Your circulation plummets, but you manage to staunch the bleeding and alleviate the pain. After a while, you're able to move on. Okay. Temperature hurt. Health hurt a little bit. Some time. But no bad status effect. Could have been worse. Let's go sleep. Let's sleep for a long time. Get back pretty much all of our energy. Okay, so we're trying to go that way. Ultimately. I like to click up here and just see the route just so I know that this way does not have a dead end. So that way does not have a dead end. Our temperature is not looking too good. We do have consumable items, of course. Actually, hold on. Do I want some other events? Mm -hmm. No, let's just keep going for now. We have a bunch of ice coming up, which is going to be good for my crampons. Ooh, a lot of really dangerous tiles. Which is not good for anything. Actually, wait, is that a dead end? No. No, that's fine. That's a nasty pathway, but let's do it. You kind of have no choice sometimes. Like, the critical pathways and stuff usually have really nasty tiles around them. Is that worth it for one yellow? I think it's worth it. Ah, <laughs> no! You hear a couple of loose stones rolling down the mountain. One of them hits you on the torso. Well, just a little bit of health damage. I guess the helmet protected our... Torso? Eh, I'll take it. The snow under your feet is churned up as if recently moved around. Could someone have been digging here? Hmm. Let's dig deep. You kneel down and use your hands to dig through the snow. You can feel the cold creeping up your arms. You're just about to give up when your hand hits a hard surface. A crumbling wooden crate containing provisions. You take what's still good. But who buried the crate here and why? Oh, nice. We get food and uh, a leaf, which restores our sanity. I have a lot of consumables, which is nice. And I'm going to get temperature back with every consumable I use, even if it's not one specifically made for temperature. So even if I eat, I get temperature back, use oxygen, I get temperature back. So I'm not too worried about my temperature. I am a little bit worried about my sanity. End of mission, 24 hours, 48 hours. Ah, it improves how much I gain when I sleep. Let's do that. Definitely going to be sleeping a lot. Ooh, there's a nice sun up there. That's going to give me some good stuff back. Guaranteed good event. Hmm, I should probably go sleep. Yeah, let's go do that. You enter a vast cave. Several passages lead deep into the mountain. 
You listen. You can hear a metallic clanging coming from one of the passages, as if someone is banging a hammer against a heat pipe. Mm, follow the noise. You walk a few steps down the passageway. The clanging gets louder, but it's so dark that it's hard to say how far away the noise is coming from. Use my flashlight. You move further and further into the cave system. The knocking is muffled and regular as if coming from a broken machine. Uh, pretty much the same as before. Discover a metallic chest in a niche. Some XP and... Oh, a bandage. Gives me health back. Let's sleep for a long time. Oh, we're going to get a lot of body temperature back. A nice warm cave. Yeah, you really want to use caves when you can. Only use a tent if it's your only option. You're standing at the entrance to a glacial cave. The light that finds its way through the thick ice makes the walls glow a deep, invigorating blue. Oh, you get sanity and XP for that. And that's it. Nice. Yeah, we really needed sanity. Now let's go get this one. It's going to take more energy to do that route, but then I can avoid maybe breaking my leg. We're getting pretty close to the death zone. We're just a little bit shy of 6,000. The pedestal of sorts again. Health or energy. We're pretty good on health, so let's do energy. Okay, so we can go that way. I th think I will. Yeah, so that little icon there shows the mountain, and I think that's like an oxygen canister, so that means that is the step where you're going to enter the death zone. This is where things are going to get high pressure. <laughs> Everything before this was easy. Here we go. So when you first enter, first enter the death zone, you have a choice. You pause for a moment to prepare for the difficult path towards the summit. So you can get temporary bonuses depending on what you want to do. This will give you decreased energy cost for a short time. So if you have a lot of energy built up and you don't want to stop for any events, then maybe you want to take this and just go for it as fast as possible. Or get a bonus to your oxygen for a relatively long time. Take it slow. You're going to stop for events and things like that. Or you can just kind of increase your health and sanity. Get a little bit of a boost. I think I'm going to ta take the take it slow for the oxygen. Let's see how long that lasts. 24 hours. So not that long really, but eh, I'll take it. You catch a scent on the wind, burning wood. You follow your nose, and behind some rocky peaks, you discover a patched, dingy-looking tent. Next to the tent, the glowing embers of a campfire emit a thin plume of smoke. You look around, not a soul for miles. Well, someone's been here recently if there's an active campfire. There's embers. Hmm... In my experience, if you try to call out, people just hit you in the head. Like, that's kind of people's response to everything. If they find you, they hit you in the head. So I think I'm just going to continue. <laughs> people are just really, like, thwack happy in this world. Oh, look at all these events. So many events. Give me that treasure chest. Oh, 
A smooth, sparkling stone catches your eye. Its surface is covered in delicate, complex patterns of ice crystals that remind you of saplings, ferns, and blossoms. A beautiful sight. Mm, let's examine the ice crystals. You stare at the patterns of frost, transfixed. It's almost as if they're moving and growing before your very eyes. The thought that true beauty such as this can exist in even the most hostile, inhospitable climate leaves you feeling reassured and content. Oh, some sanity. Nice. Old woman, friendly toothless smile. We rest and regain warmth. We definitely need warmth. Okay, now we have the crampon, so going the ice route would be nice. There's like no ice over here on the right, but over there, there's a lot of ice. So let's head over in that direction. Hmm. I have to be a little bit more careful about what I do since we're in the death zone. Time does matter in the death zone because of the oxygen thing. So it'd be best to avoid sleeping if I can. You encounter a cloaked mountaineer. He points at your flask and holds his hands together. Hmm. Yeah, they can have the tea. The Mountaineer bows and continues on his way. We get some sanity back for that, and I think something good will happen later, probably. They usually reward you later. Controlled breathing for the whole mission. More oxygen, more max oxygen. Ooh, that's good. 24 hours, 24 hours. Let's take the oxygen one. Looked like our oxygen went down, but that's just because our max oxygen was increased. Hmm, that's a lot of energy to spend getting up to that treasure chest. I don't think I want it that bad. I want to go sleep. How many foods do I have? I have two. So we can get back a decent amount of energy. Like, I don't want to be sleeping while my preserve your breath thing is active. I'd rather just be moving. So, I, yeah, I don't think I want to go sleep. Let's not worry about too many events and just kind of get moving. I think it's worth going to the cave, not to sleep, but just to try to explore it since I have a flashlight. Explore. Use my flashlight. The flashlight illuminates the passageway and you go ever deeper into the cave system. Finally, you enter a chamber and find a box containing some provisions. Nice. Yeah, totally worth it. Some more hot tea and yet another thing of food. Yeah, we're doing really good on supplies. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Um... What would happen if I slept? Yeah, my oxygen would go down by quite a bit. So let's not do that. Um, but yeah, I totally forgot about the oxygen mask. I should be wearing this. I don't really need protection against, you know, health.
And now this giving our tea is paying back. You encounter the cloaked mountaineer again. He's holding a vacuum flask filled with tea in his hands, which he passes to you. Then he pulls out some herbs and a torch and offers them to you alternately. So we can take just the tea or the tea and herb or the tea and the torch. Well, we have a flashlight, so we don't need a torch. <laughs> we can just take all of his items. Just be really selfish. We don't really need an herb either. I mean, we're good on consumables. Let's just take the tea. They smile and bow and then continues on his way. We get some sanity back. Ooh, getting that would be nice. Could probably get some energy back. You sit down on a rock to relax. A pleasant warmth slowly fills your body. You touch the stone with your hand. It's warm. So warm that the ice and snow around it has melted. Why didn't you notice that before? You close your eyes and regain warmth or sanity. Um, Warmth is easier to get back, I think, than sanity. So let's take sanity. could go down a bit to get that. I don't need stuff, though. It's just... is the thing. I really don't need stuff. I'm good on stuff. I just need to get up there. Ooh, that's gonna be a nasty climb right there. Hmm. Might be better to go over that way, possibly. Nah, this is way closer. Like, this is much more straightforward to get there. Might break my leg here. Ah! You approach a canyon and notice that a rope has been stretched across it. Who could have done that? And can you risk using it? If I take a detour, it'll take time, which means temperature and oxygen. I don't mind that. Yeah, taking detour is fine. If the rope snapped, you never would have survived the fall. You decide to find another way. Okay, my energy is super low. Let's eat. It's only one way up. This. Oof. Nasty. Okay, we're almost there. Mm, there's quite a few impassable ways. Yeah, like these. You can't pass any of these. So we're going to need to go right a little bit. Oh man, there's a lot of nasty tiles. Uh, might as well get the treasure chest. You hear a couple of loose stones rolling down the mountain. One of them hits you on the torso. A little bit of damage. That's fine. I don't mind a little bit of damage, I just don't want a status effect. You're trudging across a snow-covered plain when your boot catches on something stretching lengthwise along the ground. You're stunned to discover a thick black cable. Why is it here and where does it lead? Ooh, that's gonna cost... a lot. 
of temperature and oxygen. But I do want to follow the cable. I want to know where it goes. Go. The cable leads you to the edge of a small canyon. You can see that it runs down the sheer canyon slope, ultimately disappearing into a pile of rubble at the bottom. It seems clear that there was an avalanche here. Is it worth climbing down to take a look? Yes, go take a look. I want to know. Boulders, some the size of wagon wheels, crash down onto the floor of the canyon as you grope your way from ledge to ledge. Finally, you feel solid ground under your feet again. You immediately inspect the pile of rubble. Through a crack, you can see a cavern. This rubble must be blocking the entrance to something. Maybe it was a hideout for the occupiers? Gain access to the hideout. You heave boulder after boulder away from the crack until it's wide enough for you to squeeze yourself through it. It's pitch black inside the cavern, and the air is stale, but the carefully sacked crates you discover are proof that this was indeed an encampment set up by the occupiers. Breathing heavily, you hastily rummage through the crates, where you find provisions and equipment. Your little excursion has certainly paid off. We have some food and a warm cap. Is that... No, it's not better than this, but it's different. It's all about body temperature. But we don't really need to worry about body temperature. I'm going to keep the oxygen mask on. Oh, um... Can I turn this sideways? I guess not, but I can do that. Mm, these are active till the end of the mission. This gives me more body temperature when moving. This only applies when you're sleeping without a tent. Not a problem. Let's take stay warm. Actually, wait. What about this? 48 hours. More oxygen. Oh, but you take increased sanity loss until the end of the mission. No, thank you. Okay, your temperature is super low. Let's drink some hot tea. And another one. Couple nasty tiles here, but worth it. Yeah, we can just make it without running out of energy. I mean, I have food, but I don't know. I don't want to open my inventory. I'm lazy. Summit, here we come. Summit, here we are. Your heart feels light and full of joy as you stand on the summit. The hardship of the climb already forgotten. You savor the moment. It is yours and yours alone. What an adventure. What a view. Off in the distance, you can see more mountains. Higher even than the one you're standing on. And what's that? Something stands atop one of them. Long and thin. From this distance, it looks like an antenna. But they can't be right. Or can it? You want to take a closer look. You aren't done exploring yet, but first you have to get out of the death zone and find a safe place to take a break. Okay, so yeah, we're not done with the mission yet. Now we need to get back down, but to a different place than where we started. One that should thankfully be closer, I think. And we also get a boost to basically all our stats. Just for getting to the summit. Yeah, that's where we need to get down to. Definitely closer than where we started. Where we started is there. That tiny little orange dot in the distance. That's where we started. Okay. Yeah, how are we doing on oxygen? We have two bottles. We're good on oxygen. We're doing pretty well with everything, really. I think we're going to have to sleep in our tent, though. We're definitely going to run out of, a, out of a energy coming down. Yeah, that's going to use up pretty much all of our energy. It's always really steep near the stum summit. Ah, it's so bright. Is there a cave super close? There isn't. So should I just eat? 
Nah, let's just let's just sleep. energy so fast with these super steep sections. Ah! Rock and debris as far as the eye can see. You balance carefully on the boulders so as not to slip and fall. Suddenly, right in front of you, a shadow leaps out of a recess in the rock coming straight at you. You jump in fear, lose your balance, and crash to the ground. You look up to see a mountain hare. You scrape up your knee because of a bunny. <laughs> we got a status effect. For 16 hours, we have plus 30% energy cost on all terrain. Ugh. Okay. Now would be a good time to sleep again. Try to sleep some of that off. Plus, we're almost out of energy anyway. I'd feel more comfortable if I used an oxygen canister. God, the energy cost is horrible. Like, I, I think I should just rest again. Yeah, I'm just gonna rest again. Then we won't have that 30% energy cost increase. So now our tent has dissolved in the mountain air. But we do have two things of canned food. And it's a nice clear day now. Treasure chest. You march along a mountain ridge, its steep slopes lined with gnarled trees defying the elements. You spot an oxygen bottle on a narrow and fragile looking ledge. You could pick up a branch and try to salvage the item. Nah, we don't need oxygen. Still have another bottle. We're fine. We're pretty close to being out of the death zone. Okay, yeah, that looks okay. I mean, like, generally speaking. If I take that literal route, there's a million places to break my legs, so no thanks, but that general direction seems fine. You discover an oxygen mask at the bottom of a very narrow and very steep crevasse. You could squeeze into the... Why did I say crevasse? Like I'm, I don't know, British or something? Crevice. Um, you could squeeze into the crevice and climb down to retrieve the oxygen mask. I already have one. I don't need it. Mm. How easily could I get that? Pretty easily. That's definitely worth it. You discover a tree. You don't know how it could survive at this altitude, but the sight of it comforts you. XP and sanity. Can 
can I get down from here? No, you have to go around. We got a couple caves here. Is that down out of the death zone? Oh, that one is. This one's not, but this one's just out of the death zone. Yeah. Let's try to take it, but maybe let's not take that extreme drop. Let's try to go around. Oh man, there's a lot of yellow tiles. Ooh. Although, I guess I kind of want this one, too, because I have a flashlight. I'm not going to sleep here, but I do want to see if I can find some loot. Not that I need it for this mission, but, like, the more events you do, the more XP you get. Because there is, like, an XP and leveling system. Uh, you feel an icy wind on your face. It seems to be coming from inside the cave. Follow the wind. Countless stalactites hang from the ceiling, blocking your path. As you deftly search for gaps between the enormous rock formations ducking beneath him, you suddenly hear a grinding noise. Just a moment later, you feel a sharp, pointed object boring into your shoulder. Lips pressed together in pain, you turn back. It's just not worth it. Well, shit. All that got me was a... hurdy torso. Minus two oxygen per hour when moving. Well, shit. Let's get out of the death zone there. Then we don't have to worry about oxygen. No! A couple of loose stones. One of them hits you on the torso. That's ah, fine. My torso can take it. Yes. Out of the death zone. A short way ahead in the cave, the ground disappears. There is a wide, deep fault in the earth in front of you, stretching from one wall to the other. Hmm. Explore it. You squint down and make out something lying at the bottom. It looks like it might be a backpack or bag. Flashlight. Search through the backpack, find valuable equipment. Mm. Oh, we got some insulated boots. Don't really need that though. Our temperature's fine. Yeah, let's sleep long. Ah, oh, yes, beautiful sight. And yes, our oxygen passively increases when you rest when you're out of the death zone. I don't know how that works, but apparently your canisters just like passively absorb oxygen. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. Level up. So at this point, we're going to be finishing pretty quick, so I don't mind taking like a 24 hour thing. Body temperature, but you spend more energy, no thanks. More experience for all events, sure. I can't see a damn thing in this like, little rut that we're in. Let's get out of here. Oh right, we're going back into the death zone for a second. We'll be out of it again in no time. No, rocky slope. Climb over the rock, six energy, or spend time taking a detour. Let's do that. Yeah, we're good. I think I'm just in the death zone here, so if I sleep there, I'm gonna, I guess, suffocate in my sleep from a lack of oxygen. Yeah, what the heck. I just won't sleep. I want the XP gain from events. 
Oh, shit. Towards the rear, you notice an extinguished campfire. Lying in front of it is a stranger bundled up under a fur blanket. Yeah, don't wake the stranger because he'll probably just hit me in the head. I guess I can't explore, really. Let's just leave. Eat another thing of food. Give me some XP. As you gaze around, you notice a faint light in the distance. It flits back and forth, up and down. Yeah, approach it. As you get closer, you realize it's fireflies. What a beautiful and unexpected light show. Insanity and 400 XP. Nice. Trade. Hmm. So they want some of my food. Uh, I don't want to give up my last thing of food. That's quite important to me. I don't want to trade. Man, there's a lot of bad blocks there. Might be better just to go like that. I don't know if that's any better. But yeah, we're almost out of here. There we go. The end or the beginning. A steep cliff rises in front of you. Can you find a place to rest here? A narrow canyon runs down the middle of the crag, then turns off to the side and your heart starts racing. A steel door is blocking your way. You approach the door intending to examine it. Suddenly you hear grinding and squeaking. Shocked, you take a step back as the door slowly opens. Glaring light pours out and you hear the shrill sound of a siren. As if in a trance, you walk toward the light, carefully placing one foot in front of the other. The world begins to swirl around you, faster, faster. You feel dizzy, the siren is higher now, louder. You stumble, try to grab onto something, anything, but there's nothing there. Then you fall, 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 forever. Wild mountain peaks tower into the heavens. For many years, the island was cut off from the outside world, but now the time has come to explore the mountain range and fill in the blank spots on the map. So this is the like leveling up XP for all the stuff you did during the mission screen. So we got a level in, uh, what is that? Character, level in character proficiency and item proficiency. It's gonna like unlock items, give us more capacity, which lets us store more stuff for the start of a mission, and gives us some upgrade points to spend on our characters. Okay, so this is base camp. Your eyes snap open. Where are you? What happened? You try to remember. There was that gate you walked through. Confused? 
Don't worry. That's normal if you're fully conscious when you go through the time loop. It must have something to do with the radiation. Time loop? Radiation? What is this person talking about? And who is she? Could you be hallucinating? You spot the glowing green amulet lying on the table in front of you. You're sure you've seen that stone before. Suddenly, it all comes flooding back. The silent young woman who rescued you when you nearly fell into a fissure. Why didn't she tell you all of this earlier? Would you have believed me? Not at all, right? I needed you to come with me. It was important for you to see it with your own eyes and actually experience it for yourself. I know how insane this all seems. So first things first. We're in a time loop and we're stuck on this island. But I have an idea of how we might be able to escape. I just need to perform some calculations first. I've already thought of a way you can help. As soon as you feel recovered, you should go out and try to find some information for me. Getting out there will also help you improve your skills and become more experienced. Take my amulet. Not only is it our only hope of reversing the time loop, it'll also transport you back to the station when time gets reset. The first thing to do is explore the area and familiarize yourself with the stone's power. I know I'm asking quite a lot, but there's no other way. You'll have to trust me. So let's spend our points. Um, there's three different characters you can play, but we have to unlock the other ones, the scientist and journalist. For now, we can only do the adventurer. But we have 200 points. Hmm. Character has a couple active skills. I think it'd be good to get an active skill. Let's do that. Let's get sprint. It is a skill that gives you minus 35% time cost on all terrain and plus two body temperature per hour when moving. So it only lasts for two hours, but its cooldown is 24 hours. So this is something that you're going to get to use quite a few times during a mission. Let's get it. Aside from that, we can also choose what we want to take on the next mission. So you have a capacity, and different items take different capacities. You are absolutely, undoubtedly going to want a tent. So I'm taking a tent with me. It's already half our capacity. Um, I don't think I'm going to take any equipment, honestly. It's just too expensive. So I think I'm going to just take some consumables, I suppose. Then again, I do feel like the flashlight has been particularly useful because it's it can be used in so many different caves. I feel like most caves you can use it, and it seems to pretty much guarantee that you get some good stuff. So I wonder if it might be better to have a flashlight. I'm going to try it. That only leaves us with 10 capacity, though. What the heck do I do with that? I mean, surely I shouldn't go up there without at least an oxygen bottle, right? I think I kind of need an oxygen bottle. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to leave the flashlight behind for now. When I have more capacity, maybe I'll take it. But one oxygen bottle... And maybe a safety rope. So this is something that can be used three times. Lasts for six hours each time and it allows you to ignore dangerous terrain. I think that'll be really handy. Yeah. I feel good about that. So this is the mission select screen. There's three different mountains. We just did the first one. I know there's random generation in this game. I'm assuming every time I go back to the first mountain, it's actually going to be different. Which is kind of weird if you think about it. It's supposed to be the same mountain, but whatever. It should keep it interesting. And there's various side missions that we can choose to do. This one... Oh, a scientist on a mission. Yeah, this one I think unlocks the scientist probably. This one unlocks the journalist. This one's just to scale the summit. Scale the summit. I'm not sure what that 
symbol there means exactly, the little like red backpack. I think the red backpack indicates the adventurer character, but I'm not sure why it's only on that one. So yeah, I don't entirely understand this. Perhaps I'll do this one next. It says it's a mountain formation with relatively gentle slope, so maybe that one's relatively easy? Yeah, it seems to have a different difficulty. This one says large mountain with moderate elevation. Great deal of dangerous terrain. Large mountain with moderate. This one's just a normal mountain with relatively gentle slope, so perhaps that's the next one I should take. There are some special modifiers on it. Mm, normal weather. Thin air, so breathing's a little bit harder. The nights are particularly cold. Okay, so there are going to be effects to it being nighttime. We're going to get some character proficiency and some environment proficiency if we complete it. Ah, oh, I think the symbol means you get a bonus if you complete it with that character, right? That's the adventurer symbol, and it says, when finished with adventurer, you get a thousand environment proficiency. Yeah, okay. So I think that's the one I'm going to want to do next. But yeah, for now, I think I'm going to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. I really like this game. I really like... I mean, heck, before I even end it, just look at this screen right here. I really like the base camp. Look at the steaming tea. Just, oh, all the stuff around this, like, lived in... This lived in little control room with the computer systems. Some broken glass there. Like, it just looks like some weird bomb shelter that's been converted into a living space. Generator. Oh, it's just so cool. That's what excites me about this game so much, is I just want to know more about what the hell's going on with this time loop in these mountains and what is happening here. It's so bizarre. So, yeah, hope you've enjoyed so far and I'll be back soon.